I see you took the initiative to make my favorite meal. Here are the 15 best foods around the world for those looking to taste it all. It's perfect. Poutine, Canada. It's a French Canadian delicacy called poutine. Poutine is a deceptively simple yet delicious dish hailing from Canada. Crispy French fries covered in gravy and topped with cheese curds are available elsewhere, but the Canadians are the ones that do it best. Donald's French fries in a hot tub of KFC gravy? It happens to be called poutine in Montreal. There's no consensus on who invented the dish. All that's known for sure is that poutine originated in the province of Quebec in the 1950s. From there, poutine only grew in popularity, with Burger King even serving the dish starting in 1983. What makes poutine a consistently sought-after dish is its versatility. From greasy and comforting fast food to high-end versions featuring everything from duck to lobster, the dish has come a long way from its humble country beginnings. Ramen, Japan. Let's go to an authentic Japanese noodle house. With so many different variations and possible ingredients, it's no wonder that ramen has an almost universal appeal. Typical ramen consists of Chinese-style noodles with either miso or meat broth, but the toppings can vary wildly, with each region in Japan having its take on the dish. Okay, ramen, time to capture your beauty. Toppings that are commonly seen on a bowl of ramen range from chashu pork, soft-boiled eggs and scallions, to corn, bean sprouts, and nori. Inspired by Chinese wheat noodle soup, there's no exact date for when instant ramen started appearing in Japan, but it most likely came about in the late 19th or early 20th century. Regardless of when it originated, ramen has become one of the most popular dishes in the world and a big part of every college kid's diet. Paella, Spain Paella, tell me how you make that. Well, I'd have to look up the recipe. Known as Spain's national dish, this hearty and comforting rice dish originated in the Valencia region. The dish itself is named for the large pan it's prepared in, paella meaning frying pan in the Valencian dialect. Traditional Valencian paella comprises rice, rabbit, duck, or sometimes chicken, a variety of vegetables and beans, and a mix of spices such as saffron, paprika, and garlic, to name just some of the ingredients. A word of warning, if you make paella and add seafood, make sure not to call it a traditional Valencian recipe. While there is a variation of the dish that does include seafood and a version that includes seafood and meat, they are considered different varieties. Be warned if you're planning on making your own paella variation. The people of Spain are very protective of their traditional dishes, as YouTuber Jamie Spafford found out when he created a paella burrito that angered a nation and made headlines. Pho, Vietnam. Is what? Pho. A perfect mix of different cultural influences, pho usually features a beef or chicken broth, various meat options, rice noodles, and a variety of garnishes. As with many Vietnamese dishes, pho is often topped with lots of greens like spring onions, cilantro, and Thai basil, and can be spiced up with added sriracha, chili peppers, or a host of other condiments to the diner's taste. This is insane. This existed this whole time, you don't tell me about it? Yeah, and wait till you try the beef. Like many dishes on this list, List, the exact origins of pho are unknown, but pho, as it's known now, came to popularity in the early 20th century and was originally sold by street vendors. Sellers would carry mobile kitchens on poles that featured two hanging cabinets, one containing a cauldron over a wood fire and the other housing ingredients. Poke, Hawaii. We eat poke that the Safeway provides. This traditional Hawaiian dish is often mistakenly assumed to have originated in Asia because of the combination of raw fish, seasonings, and seaweed. But the meal came about when Hawaiian fishermen began seasoning the cutoffs from their catch to eat later. We are fishers of men. The present form of poke emerged in the 1970s and features filleted raw fish served with Hawaiian salt, seaweed, and roasted ground candle nuts. 
fast forward to the mid 2010s and poke suddenly saw an explosion of popularity outside of Hawaii and in North America, where the number of restaurants serving the dish doubled from 340 to 700. The poke bowl came about as another evolution to the dish, where the ingredients are arranged in a bowl, often accompanied by rice. Nowadays, the traditional poke has evolved in a way that means adventurous eaters can customize their meal, from the type of fish featured down to the broth. Pastel de nata, Portugal. The Portuguese, absolutely, absolutely. These sweet egg custard tarts originated before the 18th century, and their invention is credited to Catholic monks at the Hieronymites Monastery in Lisbon. The monks would use egg whites to starch clothes, and instead of wasting the yolks, they would use them in pastries and baking, leading to the sweets and desserts arising in popularity. It's really good, a little bit sweet. When a sugar refinery opened up and the monastery was under the threat of closing, the monks began selling pastel de nata to bring in money. However, the monastery was eventually closed, and the recipe for the sweet treats was sold to the sugar refinery in 1837. They opened the Fabrica de Pastéis de Belém, and descendants still own the business to this day. Now, the original recipe is kept under lock and key in a secret room in a display of protective paranoia that Mr. Krabs would be proud of. Peking Duck, China Peking Duck, get your crispy Peking Duck! Originating in Beijing, a city previously sometimes referred to as Peking by other countries in the past, the Peking Duck has been around since the imperial era in China. The first restaurant known to specialize in the dish was Pian Yi Fong, which began offering it around the year 1416, and is a restaurant still in operation 600 years later. I was just talking to Siri about Peking Duck. Famous and sought after for its crispy skin and succulent meat, what makes Peking duck special is how it's prepared. Before cooking, air is forced between the skin and the meat, separating them and allowing the skin to become extra crispy during cooking. The duck is then blanched in hot water and hung to dry to let the skin tighten before being glazed in a marinade of soy sauce and five spices and maltose before being left to stand for 24 hours before hitting the oven. Often served with steamed pancakes, cucumber, and plum sauce, it's easy to see why Peking duck has stood the test of time. Lechon, Philippines Delicious. The national dish of the Philippines, lechon is similar to Peking duck with its crispy, crackling skin and slow cooking time, but the star of the dish here is roasted pig. Lechon is served for any kind of festival, holiday, or special occasion, and has two main ways of preparation, Luzon lechon and Visayas lechon. In the Visayas method, the pig is stuffed with herbs, spices, and tangled lemongrass, whereas the pig prepared in the Luzon style is only seasoned with salt and pepper, but features a liver-based sauce. The cooking style also varies between the two styles, with the Visayas lechon cooked over coconut husk charcoal, while Luzon lechon is cooked over a wood fire. The crispy, crunchy, crackling skin resulting from the preparation and cooking is what makes visitors to the Philippines rush to vendors and restaurants in search of the savory swine dish. Tacos, Mexico It's Taco the worldwide phenomenon that are tacos has no known true date of origin, but the handheld treats predate the Spanish arrival in Mexico. There is documentation from the time of the Spanish conquistadores that talks about a feast of tacos enjoyed by Europeans for the first time. A traditional taco is a maize or wheat flour tortilla filled with a combination of meats, guacamole, salsa, sour cream, and a variety of veggies like lettuce and onions. Taco, I don't know any taco. The many options and combinations for fillings are one of the things that make tacos so popular. They have almost universal appeal and can be adapted to almost any dietary requirements. Of course, Taco Bell helps spread the fast food version of the popular dish across the world, but they also popularized the Americanized hard shell style of taco, which traditionalists look down on. 
but some say makes the dish easier to walk around with. Peri Peri Chicken, South Africa. I love that. When most people hear Peri Peri Chicken, they think of chicken chain restaurant Nando's, but the dish's origin is still debated. Most people believe it may have been created by Portuguese people in South Africa, while some believe it came from Mozambique. The uniqueness of the sauce comes from the Peri Peri chilies that form the base for the surprising and spicy sauce. It also combines garlic and an oily or acidic base and often also features paprika, bay leaves, onion, and occasionally spirits like whiskey. Normally, the chicken is marinated in the sauce before being grilled. It's a simple but delicious dish that has taken the world, and especially the UK, by storm. Nando's and Peri Peri Chicken is so popular in the UK that it became a meme, and you can often hear people saying that they're off for a cheeky Nando's with the Lads. Fish and chips, UK. Fish and chips. Fat guys think we're a diet food. Fish and chips began as a staple part of the Victorian working class diet, with fish and chip shops cropping up across the country from as early as 1860. What a history. Fish to me, Gary. Comprising deep fried fish coated in a crispy batter and thick cut traditional chips, French fries for those outside of the UK, the dish itself is simple enough, but getting the right ratio is what matters. The batter needs to be just the right thickness, and the chips can't be soggy. Traditionally, fish and chips are wrapped in newspaper, sometimes in a cone shape, so it can be eaten while walking around, covered in salt and malt vinegar, with other common condiments and garnishes, including tartar sauce and curry sauce. How much do Brits love fish and chips? During the First and Second World Wars, the government safeguarded fish supplies and made it the only food not to be rationed. Tom Yum Soup, Thailand. Soup. We see soup. What kind of soup? This hot and sour soup from Thailand has a whole load of fresh and fragrant ingredients that make it stand out from the crowd. Roasted chilies, shallots, and garlic make up what's called the Nam Prik Pao, a spice paste that creates the soup base. From there, other ingredients including lemongrass, kaffir lime leaves, lime juice, and fish sauce are added to create the spicy, sour flavors that make Tom Yum so distinct. Oh, yum. Oh. Oh, that is really good. As for which protein you can expect to see in tom yum soup, it's traditionally served with shrimp or pork and garnished with a mixture of coriander, tomato, and onion, making tom yum a melting pot of complex flavors. There are different variations of tom yum across Thailand, some with a creamier base that includes coconut milk and some that feature a clear fish broth. But the hot and sour element stays the same. Sushi, Japan. Ooh, sushi! Sushi is a food enjoyed around the world for its freshness and many varieties. The most typical forms of sushi seen are maki sushi and nigiri sushi. Maki rolls are in the form of rice rolled around filling and cut into sections, often surrounded by nori, while nigiri is hand-pressed rice mounds with cuts of various seafood as a topping. The main component of sushi may appear to be seafood, but it's actually the rice that's the most important aspect. What secret ingredient? Traditionally, medium grain rice is used and prepared with vinegar, sugar, and salt, giving sushi its distinctive flavor. With sushi, fillings and toppings can range from varieties of raw fish to fish roe, cucumbers, and even cream cheese. Hamburger, Germany. I'd have a burger. Do you want a burger? I could go for a burger, yeah. The classic burger's origins are up for debate, but its creation is widely attributed to Germany. Hamburg, Germany, to be exact, hence the name. Hamburgers are found almost everywhere in the world, and the most popular fast food chains on the planet are burger joints. A basic burger formula is simple. A juicy meat patty between two halves of a soft bun, served classically with ketchup and mustard as condiments, and featuring a slice of tomato and lettuce as toppings. The burger didn't change me! With things like bacon, cheese, onions, and pickles becoming commonplace. For those feeling adventurous and hungry, there's no shortage of crazy burger challenges to try, from huge stacks of patties to burgers stuck between donuts instead of buns. The humble backyard barbecue staple has become a global food that can be simple or sophisticated. Neapolitan Pizza, Italy. Pizza, pizza. 
Neapolitan pizza, known as pizza napolitana in Italian and also known as Naples-style pizza, is a style of pizza topped with tomato and mozzarella. Seems pretty simple, but those tomatoes have to be from specific areas to make it a true Neapolitan. They have to be either San Marzano tomatoes or Pomodorino del Pianolo del Vesuvio tomatoes, which grow on the volcanic plains to the south of Mount Vesuvius. It's full of interesting facts. The cheese also has to be specific. Either Mozzarella di Bufala Campania, a protected type of cheese made with the milk from water buffalo raised in the marshlands of Campania and La or Fior di Latte, a cow's milk mozzarella created according to a specifically registered method. While there are many different styles of pizza and pizza toppings, there aren't many that have protected status from the Italian standardization body, administered by the Associazione Vera Pizza Napoletana, an organization that protects the ancient art of traditional pizza making in Italy. No wonder Domino's didn't fare so well in Italy. Hungry for more? Then check out another great Babbletop video. Just tap or click. Thanks for watching.